Huh, is Braemon really starring in a big Hollywood movie? What's up guys, it's your boy Rich here, back at it again with Braemon's all new U-2 51 jet. Let's go take a closer look at it. Let's go. And here it is, Hollywood's newest celebrity watch, Braemon's U-2 51 jet. And this watch took fresh design cues from a military project commissioned by the RAF, which is the Royal Air Force's 100th Squadron, to celebrate their centenary and complement their T-1 jet. The 100th Squadron was the first squadron formed for night bombing back in 1917. <laughs> So how did this watch and Braemon catch its big Hollywood break? Well, they can thank Tom Hardy, a friend of the brand and star of the film Venom. But we'll talk more about that later. The U-251 jet is the newest addition to the U-2 family, which was developed and inspired by a select number of elite military squadrons. This version is 43 millimeters with 49 and a half millimeters from lug to lug. 14 and a half millimeters tall and with a 22 millimeter lug width. I think it wears really well for its thickness. Here, let me show you. Hold on a second. Oh. I think it is well proportioned and it feels good on the wrist and it is very comfortable. And since we're here, let's take a look at some wrist shots. There is a lot of attention to detail on this watch, and let's stay on the dial. I really like his choice of sort of a rustic orange color that they use for the numbers and throughout the dial, including the chapter ring, and right there on the uh, second hand as well, right between the triangle. Very, very tastefully done. Well done by Braemon. And it has really nice blued hands right there. I think it might be a little harder to pick up against the black dial, but no, I think right there shows it pretty nicely. It has a really deep sapphire blue right there. Again, it comes together really nicely, nicely, very tastefully done. And right there we can see London, and that's because we know Braemon is a UK brand. The black DLC finishing is first rate, very smooth and with lots of texture. It has sort of this knurled uh, finish right here on all sides of the case. and on both pushers, including the additional uh, logos right there on each of the crowns on the pushers right there. It, it has a really nice texture to it, and it, it really gives us, it helps with gripping of, of both, both pushers here. And the bottom pusher right here controls the bi-directional double rotor. Here, I'll show you what I mean. It has a really nice soft clicking sensation right here, and it is bi-directional, so I'll show you what I mean. I can take it back. To where, it, to where it started. And the top pusher controls the time. Both pushers are really well done, very very well made. And its loom is excellent as you would expect from Braemon. The U251 jet comes with either this black leather strap here or a black DLC metal bracelet. And the strap that comes with it here is actually really nice. You can see it's actually, it's fairly thick. It certainly isn't flimsy and it is well, well padded uh, throughout the strap here. And there is the Braemon branding right there on the buckle. And if we turn the watch over, we see one of the first major changes to its previous DLC U2 model. And that's this smoked tinted sapphire crystal right here, which is actually really cool. It's sort of, it is actually really rare to see a tinted, a tinted uh, sapphire crystal uh, back like this. And it is exposing their BE36AE automatic chronometer with 38 hours of power reserve based on the 2892 with Braemon's variations. And there is, we can see it is actually really, really well finished here. Uh, it looks like it is also grayed or tinted, but I think the the, the movements uh, and the parts right there are still in the steel color. I just think it appears that way through the uh, smoked uh, crystal right here. But we can still see that it is it is it is nicely finished. Uh, definitely attractive enough uh, for us to see the movement, and we can see their custom rotor there as well. They Bremont did a really nice job. Uh, with this movement and with this tinted uh, uh, sapphire 
exhibition bag right here. The U251J is definitely very stealthy and I think just very tasteful, a very classy looking watch and a standout among black DLC watches and extremely well made, a very sturdy case. It's, it's definitely a nice option, a really great option actually for black DLC watches. And the price for the U251 Jet is approximately $5,200. And we're back, and let's talk about the history of Braemon. They started in 2002 by Nick and Giles English, and have quickly become the UK's biggest and most recognized brand. And in fact, a lot of A-list celebrities are wearing a Braemon. <laughs> But as quickly as Braemont has become the must-have watch, they've also faced some criticism. Criticism? Criticism because their watches are fairly expensive and for not using a fully in-house movement. Though they've been doing some wonderful things. Since 2014, Braemont has invested in a new facility where they've been developing their own cases and their movement components. So, is Braemont still an overpriced watch? Because we often hear, well for that money I would rather buy this, that, or the other. I've always been able to handle and see many Bremonts over my time, uh, whether it's on someone or in a boutique for maybe 10-15 minutes at a time, and I've always found them to be strikingly well designed and well made. But for the first time, I'm not able to give a simple yes or no answer to that question. I think it isn't until we get to spend significant time with a Braemon that I think we start to get it. But I can't answer one question immediately, and that are these watches expensive? Yes, because by nature, any watch that's $5,000 or more is automatically very expensive. But I think there is a better way to put this into perspective. All the celebrities that I cited earlier who wear a Braemont already have the watches that we talk about that we would rather have instead of a Braemont. Yet, they are still attracted to and still wear a Braemont. I think that says a lot. So earlier, I asked this question. So, is Braemont still an overpriced watch? So the long answer is no. If we're fortunate enough to be able to afford a Braemont, we should. Because these are well-finished, well-made watches that have that X factor, which means we can't always explain things. But they just feel right within our collection. There is also something else that is kind of sort of exciting about Braemont, and that if Braemont eventually goes fully in-house with their movements, these versions could end up to be quite the collectibles, a lot like how Tudor Black Bays are. Tudor Black Bays are really well sought after on the aftermarket and they exploded ever since Tudor announced their first in-house movement with the Black Bay back in 2013. So if we, if we, if Braemon wants to follow that same business model, these versions could end up to be quite the collectibles. Either way, no one is complaining about the Tudor Etta versions. Earlier, I talked about how Braemont caught its big Hollywood break, and that's because Tom Hardy, a friend of the brand, was already going to wear his Braemont, but because of his clout and being a friend of the brand, asked Braemont to create a watch that would fit his dark character, and Braemont complied. And in addition to creating that really cool watch, they also had a lot of fun by creating this, the look of a really cool airplane with the help of a really famous artist. Hey Braemon, I'm thinking about starring in my own martial arts film where I am a black belt whose skills start to deteriorate as I start to beat up people unjustly, forcing a showdown with a white belt who is also a bully. Can you come up with a design for me? And since today's show has a movie theme, I have a suggestion for the producers of Bond, 007. Since we know the upcoming Bond film will be Daniel Craig's last turn in the role, and because you will be looking for an all new James Bond, why not start over since you're starting over with an all new James Bond and move away from Omega? What better pairing would there be with the UK's biggest watch brand with the UK's biggest action hero? Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you the next time. And we're talking about Braemont's all new YouTube. Sorry, not that YouTube. Sorry, Bono, but it's not always about you. Braemont started in... Braemont started in 2000... Braemont started in 2002 by Nick and Giles. They have that... <clears throat> they have that... <clears throat> so earlier, I asked this question. 